Hi, long time no talk. How are you doing? Hey, yeah, it's been a while. I'm good, just busy with work. And you? Same here, work's been busy, but guess what? I booked that hiking trip we talked about. We're going next month. No way, that's awesome. Where are we going? We're heading to the mountains up north. Heard the views are amazing. It'll be a nice break from work. Count me in. I could use some nature time. And it's a good reason to take a break from screens. Exactly. Found a cool cabin surrounded by trees. Cozy vibes all the way. Nice choice. Can already imagine sitting by the fire, chatting, and enjoying the quiet. That's the plan. What's new with you? Any exciting stuff? Started learning to play the guitar. It's tricky but fun, also. Adopted a stray cat last week. Meet Whiskers. Whiskers is adorable. Learning guitar and having a cat buddy sounds awesome. Thanks, it's been a good change. Can't wait for our mountain adventure. Hey, did you understand the math assignment? Not really. I'm struggling with those equations. Can you help? Sure. Let's meet at the library after the last class. Thanks. Also, have you heard about the upcoming science fair? Yeah. I'm thinking of participating. Are you? I'm not sure yet. What's your project idea? I was thinking of something related to renewable energy. How about you? Maybe something with chemistry. Let's brainstorm more later. Definitely. See you at the library. Sounds good. By the way, have you decided on your elective courses for next semester? Not yet. I'm torn between taking art or computer science. What about you? I'm leaning towards computer science. It seems like a useful skill to have. True. And it could open up some interesting career paths. Hey, did you catch the announcement about the school trip? No. What's the destination? They're organizing a trip to the Science Museum next month. It should be a lot of fun. Count me in. I've always wanted to explore that place. Are they providing more details soon? Yeah. They said there would be an information session next week. We can grab the details then. Perfect. Looking forward to it. See you at the library. And thanks again for helping with the math. Jamie, how are you today? Hi, Alex. I'm good. Thanks. How about you? I'm great. Thanks. Did you do anything interesting today? Not really. Just went to work and then took a walk in the park. How about you? Same here. Work was busy. But I always enjoy some fresh air in the park. That sounds nice. Do you have any plans for the evening? Just going home and relaxing, maybe watching a movie. What about you? I'm thinking of trying a new recipe for dinner. Cooking is my hobby. That's cool. What are you planning to cook? I'm thinking of making spaghetti with homemade tomato sauce. Yum. That sounds delicious. Can you share the recipe with me sometime? Absolutely. It's easy to make. I'll send it to you. Several days later, Alex and Jamie meet again at the park. Hi, Jamie. How have you been since we last met? Hi, Alex. I've been good. Thanks. Tried the spaghetti recipe? Yes, I did. It was delicious. Thanks for sharing. I'm glad you liked it. So, anything new with you? Not much. Just the usual routine. How about you? Any exciting updates? Well, I started a new book. It's a mystery novel. I love getting lost in a good story. That's awesome. I enjoy reading too. What's the title of the book? It's called The Silent Detective, so far. It's really intriguing. I'll have to check it out. I've been looking for a new book to read. Definitely give it a try. What kind of books do you usually enjoy? I like a bit of everything, but lately, I've been into science fiction. The possibilities are fascinating. Science fiction is interesting. Any favorite authors or books? I'm a fan of Isaac Asimov. His ideas about robotics and future technology are mind-blowing. Ah, a classic choice. I should explore more in that genre. Thanks for the recommendation. Anytime, let me know how you like The Silent Detective. Maybe we can discuss it next time. 
Absolutely, looking forward to it. Well, I should get going. Enjoy the rest of your day, Alex. You too, Jamie. Hey, sweetheart, how was your day at school? It was okay, Dad. Just the usual stuff. How was your day? Not bad. Work was busy, but I managed. Anything interesting happen at school? Well, we started a new project in science class. We have to create a model of the solar system. That sounds like a fun project. What planets are you including in your model? I think I'll include all of them. I want it to be as accurate as possible. That's ambitious. Do you need any help with it? Maybe with the materials. Can we go to the store this weekend to get some supplies? Of course. We can make a list together. What else is new? Oh, I also joined the art club. We're working on a mural for the school hallway. That's fantastic. What's the theme of the mural? Unity and diversity. Each student gets a section to paint something that represents them. What are you thinking of painting on your section? I'm not sure yet. Maybe something related to our family and different cultures. I love that idea. It'll be a beautiful representation of who you are. Speaking of family, how's your brother doing? He's good. Still obsessed with dinosaurs. You know how he is. He wants to be a paleontologist when he grows up. That's great. Encourage his passions, and who knows, maybe one day he'll make a groundbreaking discovery. I hope so. It's cool how everyone in the family has their own interests and dreams. Absolutely. It's what makes our family unique. By the way, have you thought more about what you want to study in college? I'm leaning towards environmental science. I want to make a positive impact on the planet. That's a noble choice. We need more people working towards a sustainable future. I'm proud of you for thinking about these things. Thanks, Dad. I just want to make a difference, you know? You're already making a difference by being the amazing person you are. Remember, making a difference doesn't always mean doing grand things. Small acts of kindness and responsibility matter too. I'll keep that in mind. Hey, speaking of responsibility, can I get a part-time job? A job? Well, that's a big step. Why do you want one? I want to start saving money for college and be more independent. Plus, it'll be a good experience. I appreciate your initiative. Let's discuss it more over the weekend. We can explore potential opportunities together. Thanks, Dad. You're the best. And you're the best daughter a father could ask for. Now, how about we make some dinner together? Sounds good. Can we make those tacos you taught me last month? Absolutely. Your taco making skills are improving, by the way. Well, I learned from the best. Taylor, have you ever thought about how important it is to speak English fluently? Absolutely. Alex, it's like a global ticket. Opens doors everywhere. Why do you ask? I've been trying to improve my English, and it got me thinking about its significance. I mean, professionally and personally, it seems crucial. You're spot on. In my job, effective communication is key. And English is often the common ground. So, what have you been doing to enhance your fluency? Well, I've started practicing daily conversations with native speakers online. It's helping me get used to different accents and expressions. That's a great initiative. I found that watching English movies and TV shows really helped me. It's like a fun way to learn while being entertained. True, but I struggle with expanding my vocabulary. Any tips on that? Reading is your friend, Alex. Pick up English books, articles, anything that interests you, and note down new words. Make them a part of your daily usage. Good idea, but I sometimes worry about making mistakes, you know? It feels embarrassing. Don't let that hold you back. Mistakes are proof that you're trying. I've learned more from my errors than from anything else. Embrace them. And what about the accent? I feel like I'll never sound as good as native speakers. Hey, your unique accent tells your story. As long as you're clear and understood, that's what matters. And besides, accents can be charming. Thanks, Taylor. Your insights are really encouraging. I guess it's more about the journey than reaching some perfect endpoint. Absolutely, Alex, we enjoy the process. And you'll see improvements over time. And hey, if you ever feel stuck, we can always practice together.
That sounds like a plan. Thanks for the pep talk, Taylor. Anytime. Alex, happy learning. In a bustling coffee shop, Sarah and Alex sat across from each other, sipping their favorite brews. The aroma of freshly ground coffee beans filled the air as they delved into a conversation about the self-improvement books that had recently sparked their interest. You know, I've been reading this incredible self-improvement book lately called Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's all about the power of tiny changes for remarkable results. Really? That sounds interesting. What's the main takeaway so far? Well, Clear emphasizes the concept of compound growth, how small habits when consistently practiced can lead to significant improvements over time. It's all about making those 1% changes daily. That reminds me of The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. He talks about similar principles focusing on making small daily disciplines that lead to success and happiness. Exactly. It's fascinating how these books align in their core message. How about you? Any recent reads on self-improvement? I've been diving into Mindset by Carol S. Dweck. It explores the idea of having a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. The way we perceive challenges and setbacks can significantly impact our ability to learn and grow. Oh, I've heard of that one. It's on my list. How has it influenced your thinking so far? It's been eye-opening. Dweck explains how those with a growth mindset embrace challenges as opportunities to learn, while those with a fixed mindset may avoid challenges to protect their ego. It's making me reconsider how I approach obstacles in my own life. It's incredible how these books can reshape our perspectives. Speaking of mindset, have you read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle? It's more about living in the present moment. Yes, that's a game changer too. Tal emphasizes the importance of letting go of the past and future, finding peace in the present. It's challenging but so rewarding once you start practicing it. Absolutely. And it's not just about reading these books. It's about applying the principles in our lives. That's where the real transformation happens. Totally agree. Have you come across any practical exercises or tips in your readings? The 5 Second Rule by Mel Robbins has been a game changer for me in that regard. It's about taking action and countering self-doubt by counting down from five and then moving. Simple yet effective. That's interesting. I'll add it to my reading list. Speaking of practicality, have you read Deep Work by Cal Newport? It's all about cultivating a focused and distraction-free work environment. Yes. Newport argues that deep, concentrated work is essential for producing high-quality results. With the constant distractions in our modern lives, creating a space for deep work can significantly boost productivity. I definitely need to work on that. It's challenging to stay focused with so many distractions around. These books really address some of the common struggles we face. Absolutely. They serve as guides, offering insights and strategies to navigate the complexities of life. Have you found any books that focus on personal relationships? The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey is a classic that delves into both personal and professional effectiveness. It emphasizes principles like being proactive, prioritizing, and seeking mutual benefit in relationships. That's a timeless one. I also recently read Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman, which explores how our minds work and make decisions. Understanding cognitive biases can be enlightening in personal and professional interactions. I've heard about that one. It seems crucial for building stronger connections. It's remarkable how these books cover such diverse aspects of personal development. Absolutely. They cater to different facets of our lives, providing guidance on everything from habits and mindset to productivity and relationships. It's like having a personal mentor in book form. As their conversation continued, Sarah and Alex exchanged more book recommendations, each contributing to the ongoing journey of self-discovery and improvement. There, how's your midterm preparation going on? Oh, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. I've been cramming like crazy. Tell me about it. I feel like I've lived in the library for the past week. Same. I've got stacks of notes. But I'm not sure how much is actually sticking. I get that. It's like the more I study, the more I realize I don't know. Exactly. And there's always that one topic. 
That seems impossible to grasp. For me, it's definitely calculus. I've watched so many tutorials, but it still feels like a foreign language. Ugh, calculus is the worst. I've been stuck on a particular chapter in history, so many dates and events to remember. The struggle is real, but hey, we're not alone in this. Everyone's feeling the pressure. True, but some people seem so chill about it. I don't know how they do it. Right? It's like they have a secret weapon or something. I wish we had a superhero to swoop in and magically implant all the information into our brains. That would be a game changer. Imagine a study man saving the day with instant knowledge. Ha ha. That's a comic book I'd read. But back to reality. Have you tried any study techniques that seem to be working? I've been making flashcards like crazy. Repetition is supposed to be the key, right? Totally. I've been doing that too. Also, explaining concepts to someone else helps me remember. That's a good one. Maybe we should form a study group. Great idea. Strength in numbers, right? Absolutely. Plus, we can motivate each other and fill in the gaps in our knowledge. Speaking of motivation, how do you stay focused? I keep getting distracted by social media. I feel you. I've resorted to using apps that block my access to certain sites during study sessions. Smart move. I might need to try that. It's just so tempting to check Instagram every 10 minutes. Tell me about it. The struggle is real, but we've got to stay disciplined. Agree. So, what's your go-to stress relief during study breaks? I've been taking short walks to clear my head. Helps me reset before diving back into the books. Nice. I've been binging on chocolate, not the healthiest, but it works. Whatever gets you through, right? We all have our coping mechanisms. True. Hey, after midterms, we should treat ourselves to something special. Absolutely. A reward is definitely in order. Maybe a movie night or a weekend getaway. Sounds like a plan. It'll give us something to look forward to and recharge our brains. Definitely. We got this. Midterms are tough, but we'll come out on top. Couldn't agree more. Let's crush it.